but I had never had any kind of memorable experience. I'd never seen lights do any of the things that people say um, until last year. And um, I don't know if anybody's buying that arrow report. I mean, I mean, was it meant to be bought by anybody? Was anybody like anybody with a brain knows that they're lying? You know, the majority of people I meet now, when I talk about my experience, they say, oh, I've also had an experience. It's an inevitability. It has to happen. And it's happened before. And I mean, it's 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 always it's always um, in its own way, catastrophic. <laughs> you know, so she's a really amazing welder. And so we're talking about actually building a the the sport model UFO. Yeah, so if if we can build that and have other like um, installations, um, then we'll we'll meet that meow wolf kind of goal. You know, it'll be it'll be indisputably fun. The whole thing culminates in a dance party and pancakes. I mean, and everybody walks away a little bit more spooked. You know, <laughs> I I now look at maybe a the more yin aspect versus the yang aspect. My idea is that this should bring everybody together. We've seen it happen in Congress where this is a bipartisan issue. I think that is true for humanity. The following is a conversation with Dorje Meta. Dorje is a friend of mine and the UAP files. He's also contributed to the UAP file substack and contributed in many other ways. Dorje studies Zen, has black belts in karate and Eido. He's been studying UFOs and ancient cultures intensely for a year now. The phenomena has become central to his life, sending him non-ambiguous suggestions towards a higher vibrational lifestyle. He's been tattooing for 18 years and owns his own studio, Area Tattoo Studio, which is a nod to Area 51. Dorje is a multifaceted individual whose journey traverses realms both artistic and mystical. With a career span in 18 years, he's honed his craft as a professional tattoo artist, crafting intricate designs that serve as a living expression of his client's stories. Yet his identity extends beyond the tattoo artistry. He identifies as a sorcerer, a title earned through dedication to alchemy and Zen mastery. But what does it mean to be a sorcerer in the modern world? For him, it's not merely whimsical or pretentious mysticism. It's a profound reflection of a life steeped in esoteric wisdom. From martial arts to tantric meditation, from energy manipulation to remote viewing, he's delved into a mixture of disciplines, shaping a perspective that transcends the ordinary a fascinating guy and a fascinating conversation. So the following is my conversation with Dorje Mehta. First of all, if it's okay, I just, I'm, I'm keen to know where your interest kind of started from and what first piqued your interest in the kind of UFO, UAP phenomenon. Well, I assume I have been interested in it just like everybody else. Um, I grew up with Star Wars and Star Trek and the X-Files and all that. Um, but I had never had any kind of memorable experience. I'd never seen lights do any of the things that people say um, until last year. And um, that was July 2023 when I saw my... Uh, my, I had my first encounter with my friend and um, I wouldn't even say that it piqued my interest um, because all the stuff that has happened since then has been uh, strange. It's been an entirely uh, unexpected paradigm shift for me. So the encounter was brief. I just saw hundreds of lights appear out of the black of the sky and traverse. And uh, my friend and I got a chill, you know, the area that we were in got really cold. And um, we were both just locked on it, mesmerized. And uh, when he reached for his phone, they went back. They just left. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And um, uh, I have just been obsessed since then. Uh, that was around the same time that actually, uh, I'm I'm not sure if it was before. I'm I don't think it was before. Um, but that was around the time Dave Grush came out uh to News Nation. And uh that morning something said 
type in UFO news. <laughs> and it was that. And so um, since then, I mean, we've just been, I mean, case in point for the, the congressional hearing, we streamed it live and ordered like $170 worth of Starbucks, you know, <laughs> it was a big celebration, you know, yeah. but yes, that, that was my start last year, 2023. I mean, it's fascinating that the, you, you kind of felt sort of compelled to type in UFO. And I mean, on the day, I would suggest that um, David Grush, uh, him coming out and that kind of piece that he did to, I think it was News Nation, wasn't it? Or mm -hmm. News Nation, yeah. Um, probably one of the biggest moments in kind of UFO history i guess for for decades you know real yes. really decades in terms of his kind of position in the government and that's incredible it was surprising yeah do you did you have that kind of conversation with your your friend have you had kind of ongoing conversations with your friend afterwards or was it one of those that you kind of paused for a while and and came back to later or what was the communication like we we talk about it from time to time um what I'm certain of is that it was different for both of us. Um, the mutual thing was that we definitely saw something together. And um, he's actually transformed quite a bit too. You know, um, he's he's changed. He's living a much healthier lifestyle. And um, that's certainly what has happened to me, you know. Um, but it is a highly individual experience which is what is so alarming about it because most other aspects of our day-to-day -day are, well, seemingly shared experiences. Like an orange tastes the same to you, I assume, as it does to me, because if I put it in your food, you'd, you'd taste like, is this orange? You know, we'd, we kind of share that, but I don't think that's the same. I think whatever this creature is, whatever this uh, phenomenon is, is much like Yahweh. You know, Yahweh is described as a, yeah, the, the word is aye esher aye, which is um, I am well whatever I want to be, I will be whatever I choose to be. That's when Moses asked, "What what is your name?" And it said, "I'm I'm whatever I want." And uh, and uh, yeah, it, it's just uh, it's baffling how, I mean, you could see that too with the uh, the different reportings of UAP and such. You know, it's just a miraculous miscellany. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah even with people that experience things at the same time. And, you know, I've spoken to people who have seen things with, you know, their entire family and the, the description of this, you know, craft uh, that was fairly close to where they were, you know, can be quite different depending on the different person. So it's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. that it's a unique um, experience for each person. Yeah. It's fascinating. It is fascinating. What, what um, if you don't mind me asking, what, what kind of changes have you kind of experienced since then so you mentioned that you know you, you changed quite significantly you know, what kind oh, of yeah. well my my mental sphere is different it seems like the lights are on i'm aware of my impulses i'm aware of my thoughts i'm aware of my patterns like um uh i, f I feel like hyper aware almost like there's another set of eyes inside of my mind you know and um i receive little synchronicities i guess you know diana walsh uh Pasolka really stood out to me her work i mean i i casually listen to hours of uh content because i tattoo and um i get to just absorb i, I get to be a sponge but um what she kind of described you know uh just kind of making the religious sort of connection i certainly do not have uh, i am no longer at war with that word religion because I feel like I have become quite religious, um, except I'm Buddhist, so I am not labeling whatever this is. So, uh, but I receive, you know, like don't drink coffee, um, don't drink alcohol, and it's clear as day. You know, not maybe not voices, but like this is what you need to do. And then, um, so I kind of follow all of these little suggestions. Um, after my UFO event, uh, which I call it that, I it was a thing it was present it was like a, a swarm of bees is what it was like you know but um after that i i was in my yard kind of praying you know I, <laughs> trying to communicate with it and by the way i received no no kind of voices 
it's always ambiguous, you know, but it's always like, this is correct. It's like it hijacks your brain a little bit and tells you things, you know, but I had a moment where I said, um, whatever you are, if you are evil, I am not judging you. I just want to know. I just want to know what's going on because, you know, everything has changed. I'm kind of scared, you know, like, um, I know whatever this is, is real. And the majority of the people around me are not aware that it is real. And, um, so I, I received nothing. And then I said, okay, if you are benevolent, show yourself to me. What are you? Who are you? And uh, I received a, a pretty vivid, ooh, just a, a flash of, of, of visions. And then uh, just naturally, I looked it up. You know, I tried to make sense of it using the internet, which was, I, I guess it knew that would be my natural instinct because what I looked up, it said, this is this entity. And uh, I don't know, I... You know, it's experiential, obviously. It sounds crazy, but um, I said, what do you want from me? And it said, listen, it, it, I started listening in my head to uh, Mozart's Requiem Mass. But it, I mean, it's been my favorite music since I was young, which is strange. You know, I've, I've always had a fascination with it. But then it was like, I was aware that there was more that I had not heard, which I didn't, I didn't actually know that. So I looked it up in that catalog with the Mozart Requiem. There's tons of music I had not heard. So I listened to it front to back. And it it was to me like voices, like something about it was like crop circles for my ears. The information came through and I was aware then that there's like this active kind of downloading going, changing, you know, maybe, maybe uh, metamorphosing in a way that is making everything more conducive to health and the the constant urge to share everything that I'm led to. Yeah. Fascinating. Is there a sense of, um, is there a sense of kind of control in amongst that? And, and I mean, the, the, the word control is quite a, um, it's different for different people, I guess, but in terms of, something that wasn't necessarily there to that extent before you said there's always been sort of something in the background, but having this experience and then things becoming a bit more uh, or a lot more kind of intense, is there a sense that there's some kind of control, um, control of you, your emotions, your, your, um, that kind of control by them. Things? Yeah. In, in any, in any kind of way. Yeah. Um, yeah, because none of this is my own volition. The path that I'm now walking I mean, I, I, I cannot recognize myself from before that event, really. I mean, my, uh, my entire world has become consumed with, um, the impulses like a snowball effect from that moment, essentially. And everything is just utterly weird now <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> point of no return. And I don't know if I would have asked for this particularly at any point. Um, I certainly don't know what's going on, you know, but, um, everything is more positive. So whatever, if it, if yes, I mean, I would have a hard time seeing any kind of malevolence from logically from, from what's going on. Cause it all seems very good, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm fascinated by, and that's kind of art and, and the kind of artists that I speak to. And I speak to a lot of um, people that have kind of different art forms that they're involved in, or they, you know, that, that that's kind of their day job or their, you know, interest in, in that's not necessarily their day job, but they have that kind of interesting um, and it's a big part of their life. And, and a lot of people that have experiences um, that I've spoken to seem to kind of, once they've had that experience, they use their artistic kind of, um, ability shall we say to kind of portray a lot of that stuff that kind of that area of the of of, of their life now that previously they perhaps didn't do before so people might you know a writer for example might write a script that relates to um ufos or, or um, non-human intelligence and uh, you know an artist with a painting etc cetera, etc cetera. And, and and i know that you're an artist mm. yourself does that kind of manifest into your art um could you sort of touch on that a little bit I'm guessing yes. so. <laughs> I, know, <laughs> I know your your um, yes. the name of your your uh, your tattoo business, and so yeah, yeah. So um, I was inspired um, to name the shop area, based you know obviously based on my fascination with Area 51, 
I mean, when, when Google Earth came out, that's all I looked up. <laughs> um, but yes, um, lately I've been tattooing um, as many angel murals as possible, you know. And uh, interestingly enough, um, a lot of the people who come my way are wanting more and more artwork that is uh, paying homage to the divine. And um, I use my craft um, I, so this is what I do for a living. I make pictures for a living and uh, I, I get to mark people permanently. So it's it's sort of a ritual environment. You know, people come to basically change their lives. So I try to offer that kind of experience now and, and sort of being a, a cogent witness to everything that's actually going on, because there is a, an alarming amount of ignorance. And, and some of that is engineered, obviously. But um so I spend the time, you know, conveying, you know, obviously here and, you know, sharing these ideals and, and understandings, but, but too, like, um, you know, I'm painting, I'm painting, always paying homage to them. You know, it's, it's the only thing that fascinates me, you know, for the first time in my life, I feel like I'm, I'm actually uh, passionate about something, you know, and because um, what I am, I'm not going to beat around the bush, what I am in communion with is the same gulf exists between us that exists between me and the ants. And I'm in utter fascination of it. I'm in awe of it. It is angels and demons and all these things. I mean, it's, it's ultra dimensional, extra dimensional, whatever you want to call it, but it, whatever you want to call it, we're meerkats and it's indescribable. <laughs> we're a colony of gophers and it's indescribable. So yeah, I just want to worship it. You know, I want to, I want to, you know, pay as much respect to it as possible and what better way than through art you know is there like a direction that you've kind of gone down where you think this is kind of the area that we should be kind of paying attention to or do you think that it's like a huge mix of different things some that we can comprehend some that we can't what's your kind of take on on what we're seeing you know what 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 congress are talking about or trying to disclose allegedly what's your kind of thought on that if it is as it appears um, in the hierarchy of species, there is something above us, something above us physically and under us. But in terms of hierarchy, there's so um, I think it pertains to everybody. I think everybody should be uh, diverting their attention to it because um, it really does just seem like a return you know, there's always been a divine presence on this planet. Um, if you study the real history of the world, uh, it becomes quite obvious that whatever it is has always been and always will be, even after the last catastrophe. It is a hardwired fact of our ecosystem, you know. Um, but there is a relationship to be had. And I think people are who are paying attention maybe are um, distracted by all of the hatred and buzz. Um, I believe that our species is becoming a type one civilization. And what we are experiencing is the tension that is, um, that is just a consequence of that. So, you know, what we're seeing in Congress and um, the unfoldings of all the different aspects of this banana Republic that we live in, you know, soon there will be a, um, a new social civil war over all of these disclosure ideas. I mean, it's, it's going to be brutal because what it is, whoever possesses it, the way that the current uh, paradigm possesses things wants to arm themselves with it. They don't necessarily want it to be the beacon of change and um, prosperity that it can be. So uh, anybody who's seeking, you know, I think anybody who's seeking it as immaculate, unlimited energy for the society is probably mistaken. But that doesn't stop me from communing directly with it. Um, because now when I knock, something knocks back. And it has changed my life thoroughly. And I I now look at maybe a, the more yin aspect versus the yang aspect my idea is that this should bring everybody together we've seen it 
happen in Congress, where this is a bipartisan issue, I think that is true for humanity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that there's, I mean, clearly we, we have a deep interest in the subject and, and you know, the, the subject itself is so broad that there's so many kind of areas to kind of to get into it and to, you know, some real kind of rabbit holes to go down. But when you kind of come outside of, of, of us and our kind of uh, circle, for, for lack of a better word, everyday people who perhaps don't kind of follow uh, the subject, perhaps haven't had an experience, why do you think that we're not getting that kind of interest from kind of the mainstream, shall we say? Um, I know that it's kind of changing, you know, it's, it's getting, it feels to, to me that it is kind of changing. It, there is a kind of, uh, we're getting to, to a point where um, a lot more uh, everyday people are, you know, for, for lack of a better um, mm. term, I guess, are kind of seeing this and, and, and asking questions about it. Whereas previously, you know, it was such a niche subject. Um, mm. But why, you know, what, why, why is it just a, a kind of a, a real small group of people that seem to be interested in the subject, that experience the subject? I mean, I think personally that in terms of experience, there's a lot of people that have experienced things, but kind of try to just close it off as mm. a something conventional because i don't want to deal with what that could be so i think that that is a lot uh, is much of a, a much more broader kind of group of people that have had an experience um but perhaps are not prepared to talk about it just yet but there is still this kind of lack of interest i guess and i'm, I'm kind of keen to, to to see what your take is on that why do you think that or if perhaps you don't but do you have a take on you know how we kind of get people involved in the subject and 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 why they they aren't as interested as perhaps we are um when uh when the divine people lived amongst uh the early peoples like in kemet it was obvious that there was a divine presence with them and i look at um maybe that is the uh, same with the sumerians you know the sumerian the, the giants etc um, I think that that's likely, you know, something that we are preparing for and what many, uh, encounters have in common is, um, a gentleness about them for sake of the human psyche. So if something appeared today, right now, it would be utter mayhem. Yeah. Like humans are monsters face it, you know, like people are going to act up. And whoever's holding the secrets would, I mean, if it was me, based on like some some things I've just witnessed in my own hometown, um, <laughs> I don't see it being a very positive thing. But um, gradually, with conditioning and, and time, like um, I think Star Wars is instrumental. I think things like um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind are instrumental in preparing the human psyche for something that is so abstract and different. I mean, have, we don't really encounter too many species in our environment uh, that we're not used to, but when we do, it's shocking. And you know, it's like, oh my God, you know, there you are. You're, you're entirely different than me. I'm frightened. Well, I mean, you know, I see that maybe the trend is just like religion. Religions don't, change in a matter of decades so the public awareness um you know since like bob lazar spilling the beans about s4 area 51 i mean that really wasn't that long ago you know and then in that time we've had the internet really take off and now we have you know it's just a matter of time you know that we have things like news nation which is doing legitimate reporting on the thing so people see it and they trust these people they trust these words whereas prior the disinformation was quite uh, effective you, you know and and um people had you know every reason to discount what they were hearing but i think you know the majority of people i meet now when i talk about my experience they say oh i've also had an experience and i swear now i mean it, i used to think that barely anybody had these experiences and now everybody has something to say so Maybe at the same time, my uh, pessimism about the society, I see it as 
it's an inevitability. It has to happen. And it's happened before. And I mean, it's, it's, it's always, it's always um, in its own way, catastrophic. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. On each side, we uh, quite a few people have, have said that, that, that they approach the kind of subject with people with caution until they kind of, you know, realize that or figure out that they're kind of interested and they're a safe person to talk to, you know, talk to about the subject and, or other people that kind of joke about it. But then when you get them on their own, you know, they're very much, well, funny you should say that because I've also experienced, you know, yeah, you know, as I was saying before, it's not, it, you know, it, it appears to be a very small select group of people that have had experiences or are interested in, in these subjects. But actually I think it's far, far broader than that. It's just, yeah the stigma that's been there for so long keeps people people keep it to themselves um yeah so i'm hoping that this this sort of thing you know this this discussion and stuff that's happening in congress and in news nation and these kind of more mainstream outlets sort of taking it on board will kind of reduce that stigma and have a massive i'm hoping it have a massive impact I really do yes you, um can we can i just ask about you so you've got an event um that you're working on and can you talk a bit about that and this kind of touches on what we were talking about before about this kind of having an experience and then that kind of manifesting into something yes. super positive for the you know for the subject yes absolutely um so we're in the process of putting together a uh, ufo uap themed um art fair um obviously that is uh, inspired by the experience that I've had, but, you know, you know, compounded on other experiences now because, um, it's, it's obvious that there's, you know, a phenomenology that is, uh, happening behind the curtain of our everyday illusion. <laughs> and, um, honestly, the art fair might be inspired by, I just don't want to be alone in the uh, weirdness it would be cool if everybody, uh, everybody driving on the road and everybody I shop next to is aware of what's going on, you know, and uh, that I, I, I kind of was inspired by a meow wolf a bit, you know, that um, people pay attention to what's fun. So why not make this fun? Why not use art as a vehicle to explain these things, which, on the on the head on their face are um i uh, i think people get confused when something that disrupts or disagrees with their usual programming enters the fray and so what we do naturally is to dismiss it but um i basically will use the art fair as a as a vehicle that makes it um undisputable you cannot help but be drawn into the fun of exploring this topic. And then along the way here, you will see um, the, the embarrassment of riches that is the UFO evidence, you know, about this story starting with, or not just starting with Roswell, but, you know, between Roswell and the congressional here, and then all the other stuff that's happened in the past year, which is unbelievable, you know? <laughs> so, um, I just want to create a forum where people can come and, and, and digest that and be exposed to it because it's nowhere. And honestly, it's, I would encourage other artists around the world to, to do the same thing, like make this something that the community can see and participate in um, because the internet isn't really that trustworthy. Social media is not trustworthy. We're, and it's not really the healthiest place to explore these things because this is a quite a sacred thing. And I think um, the Internet may trivialize everything. You know, you have everybody out there doing everything with this, this like making fake videos and such. So it's just kind of a cesspool, um, especially on Twitter and Reddit, you know. But um, but yeah, it's just uh, it should be positive. It should be educational. And then um, it's a fun way to kind of play homage uh, or pay homage to you know, some of my favorite instances in the, in the UFO lore, like the, uh, the pancakes. <laughs> Are you aware of that? Oh, no. Yeah. Pancakes. But um, uh, yeah. that out, though, it sounds fascinating. 
it's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. It was that. Um, yeah, so, so, so where is it? Are you, are you, have you kind of got a location set that you're able to talk, talk about and, and, and mm. sort of dates and stuff or no dates yet. Um, we're still, we're still experimenting with what it's going to be. I think we have a pretty good plan about execution and, uh, inclusiveness. We want it, we want it to be a pretty inclusive event. And, uh, so it'll probably be later on this year or certainly be at least a few, a few months from now. Um, but we've got a bunch of people who are very interested in participating. Uh, there's going to be food. There's going to be, you know, a bunch of themed, you know, arts and crafts, and then uh, probably culminate in a dance party, and then tons of informational, uh, educational materials throughout. So, um, I, I mean, I kind of want to make uh, like a crash, a, a, a UAP crash site, you know, complete with armed personnel and such. So, it's there's some planning and coordinating. Um, we're going to have it here in Memphis, uh, Tennessee. Uh, so my my art studio is actually inside of an artist collective. And so we'll host it here. And um, the lady who runs the place, um, she's a really amazing welder. And so we're talking about actually building a the the sport model UFO. Yeah, so if, if we can build that and have other like um, installations, um, then we'll we'll meet that meow wolf kind of goal, you know, it'll be, it'll be indisputably fun. The whole thing culminates in a dance party and pancakes. I mean, and everybody walks away a little bit more spooked, you know? <laughs> I love the idea. Yeah. Um, um, coming on to that then. So we were talking um, kind of behind the scenes about contacting the desert. Oh yeah. Similar theme. Uh, and it's, it's um, obviously I spoke to captain Ron Janix a, a while ago and he's the, kind of co-owner of it and he was telling me a bit about the the event and uh, you know he sold me on it i, I want to go <laughs> you know I was, oh, yeah i was like i could i was visualizing being there thinking i, I need to, to be at this place um but you're going yeah i'm going i'm i'm going all days uh i'm actually taking a little extra precaution i'm going like a day before and a day after you know um i'm pretty sure jess is going you know me and jess are friends online and so uh, I think I've been talking to Daniel Sheehan. I can't tell, but I don't, I don't know. I, whoever is running that page is saying, I'm, I'll see you there. So um, I am just absolutely uh, elated. I am completely delighted by the idea of meeting or just seeing or just hearing them talk, you know, just just to be able to absorb um, some of the sheer uh, majesty of, of the, 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 the Titans in this field you know and they they really are not just um you know ufo heroes but like these are some of the coolest people on the planet yeah. i mean so the research that they've done you know so the reporting that they've done the the risks that they've taken uh, i mean george knapp is he's he's an american hero in a way you know and um you know why not hear some of the biggest voices in the room you know, hear what they have to say and, and go to their intensives. I mean, I'm just going to nerd out <laughs> Richard Dolan, you know, come on. The guy fucks. I mean, uh, captain, he, he fucks, you know? So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to just veg out on a bunch of, uh, you know, UAP UFO stuff, but really just to, just to be more inspired because, um, I'm kind of a new guy in this whole thing. And, uh, no, I do have a voice. I say some interesting things, but some of these people ha are basically the the foundation of my research. You know, like Linda Moulton Howe and um, and some of her colleagues. So just to just to kind of see how they conduct themselves, and um, I mean, just the I've been I've been faced with situations that could be considered discouraging, and these people have been doing it for decades. So you know. I just want to see what I'm getting myself into. And and plus it's the 10 year anniversary. So it's going to be a little bit more of a, a bang, you know? Yeah. Just a yeah. wealth, wealth of knowledge and experience. And yeah, just to pick some of their brains would be, be incredible. I think you're going to, oh, yeah, definitely. I want to yeah. hear. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Um, on, on the subject of, we sort of touched on it a bit earlier on, but on the subject of the sort of disclosure, the potential to, 
to receive some form of disclosure. There's a couple of kind of things that I'm 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 interested in knowing from you, especially as someone that's interested in subjects that's had an experience themselves. And that's there's a couple of things. One is, do you think um the wrong bombard you with questions, but one is that oh, I like it. They're kind of kind of related. <laughs> one is that do you think that we're gonna see disclosure anytime soon? And a kind of a second part to that really is do you think that's going to come from official government people the white house etc or do you think that's going to come from kind of non-government organizations um and the third part of that question really is do you feel like you need it do you feel like it would kind of help validate your experience or do you not need it because you know you know what you've experienced how do you feel about that three questions at once sorry about that <laughs> it's a good question um well, they lie and they are good at lying. It's kind of like somebody going online to foment hatred. Um, the the fear of not being included in the mob, uh, being against the mob, you know, people would just follow suit and be hateful and stupid. So um, they really know how to exploit that. And um, I don't know if anybody's buying that arrow report. I mean... I mean, was it meant to be bought by anybody? Was anybody, like anybody with a brain knows that they're lying. So, I mean, we don't need to speculate. We don't need to fight. They're going to keep lying. I mean, Sean Kirkpatrick is a fucking puppet. He's a big bitch and a puppet. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And uh, no, I don't think that it's going to come from them. We need to stop worrying about them. Um we need sharp opposition to them. They need to be put in their place. And this uh, bastard plan that they have to, seriously, it's a total Frankenstein, like the cat's out of the bag. And I want answers because um, you cannot, uh, you cannot claim to me that you can defend my freedom if something of, I mean, completely unknown uh, is, is operating with impunity in the airspace. I mean, I saw it and I'm too small to know my benevolent feelings about the thing are accurate. I want answers. I mean, I'm, uh, there's a part of me that's shaking in my boots about the whole thing. I feel calm about it, you know, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, you're, you're Uncle Sam, like, <laughs> what's up? Tell tell us what's going on. I don't think that that's going to happen. I mean, it should happen morally, but they are amoral. I mean, every president is scandalous. Every, uh, I mean, these people killed John F. Kennedy. You know, they murder. They've killed all sorts of people. They fight and they interrogate. It's basically the same shit as Soviet Russia. I mean, it's it's like every despotic, tyrannical thing that you've ever seen on the planet, but with more nuclear armament and um, F-22s and you know, B-21s and such, you know, um, no, no, they, they have their own modus operandi, but we do have people who are very smart, like uh, Michio Kaku and Eric Weinstein and uh, Gary Nolan. And these people are, it seems, you know, everybody's alluding to a sort of a deluge of information. And uh, I, I trust that because that's literally the only thing I trust right now is that that's coming. You know, and more people have come out and said stuff. I mean, I've heard some completely jaw dropping things. I mean, I, I thought the 2017 report, the the the, the New York Times thing was jaw dropping. Uh, so to answer your question fully, I mean, does it even matter? I mean, there's going to be whole swaths of people that don't pay any attention to it, even if there's a green alien or a gray alien on the White House lawn, they'll see it and they'll move on. They're chipmunks. You know, they're rats in a maze. They don't. The attention span is too small. So, you know, we have uh, different octaves of attention in the reality, in, in the society. And um, I think that the people seeking answers are better off looking for themselves. Because uh, if Uncle Sam comes out tomorrow and says, okay, this is the truth about UFOs. This is what it is. I wouldn't trust the word they said. I wouldn't trust anything that is disclosed to me. I mean, it's like drinking the tap water at your own risk, you know, as little involvement from them, as little official things from them. I'm okay with that. 
I need no validation from them because everything that they've done is a complete clown show. And it's obvious. And I'm only 33 years old. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but that smells like shit to me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm leaning on uh, the bigger brains. And I think that inevitably, unless they're all killed in their sleep, um, they will, they will be able to make some more uh, foundational statements and I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I'm very, I feel very positive about it as it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think I was thinking about this quite deeply recently. And I think that if you, if you think back I mean, and people kind of, a lot of people forget this side of it. And, you know, the reason that they're not disclosing is because they don't want to give away secrets of reverse engineering that they've, um, you know, that they're a few steps ahead and they don't want the foreign adversaries to know about it. And I think like a massive point that we seem to be missing is that for decades and decades and decades, they've made genuine people who have had experiences think they're crazy and you know have psychological massive psychological issues like if you've seen and experienced something and the officials are saying you're crazy if you've seen or experienced that or if you think you've seen or experienced that and that you know that the psychological psychological impact on people over decades and decades and decades is just immense absolutely immense and i think to come out and say oh yeah we did that you know <laughs> there's no you know there's no way of making up for that you know no perhaps that's a big part and of they uh they they spare no expense at doing it you know it's uh that's kind of just one of the attributes of their overall plan to keep it under wraps because i mean i understand the justification i do um i would probably be forced to do the same stuff i mean there's, um, I mean, I, some of my research has led me to think that there is some sort of um, plan uh, or agreement maybe between somebody and, and the U.S. And, and, and um, because, um, you know, the crash retrievals, they call it a donation, you know, and uh, that how can they know where it's always at? How can they always know where to go? I mean, something is tipping them off, talking to them. And um, that's kind of classical in the lore. I mean, that there's an agreement that they can take certain people and um, they get certain rewards. They would not be able to make such a disclosure because it is not their directive. It is a directive higher. So if it's coming from somebody higher up on the food chain, like pretty much all decisions. I mean, if you look at the society, it's pretty obvious that people with the most resources kind of direct how things go, call that what you will. It, ha it has many names, but it exists. You know, everybody has a bank account. <laughs> I mean, everybody can only go some places and uh, there are, there are organizations that know everything about you, everywhere you've go, everywhere you've gone, every conversation you have, you know, um, but, you know, something with that kind of reach. And then, and then you look at kind of the technologies that we have. I mean, they, technology kind of baffles me. If I didn't grow up with it, it would be totally foreign. The idea of like a transceiver, you know, I mean, it's just totally alien fiber optics, you know? Um, so, I mean, maybe there is some sort of, uh, directive. And then, it, then if actually, if everybody takes a moment to think about that, that the little men, the little impotent men that go to Congress to lie, why would they be so certain? I mean, put Sean Kirkpatrick on a lie detector test, like make him do it in front of the nation. I mean, he's he worked at the Pentagon. I think it warrants that kind of answer. Do it on live television. Make him be accountable to his statements because he has this shit eating grin when he talks and and says lies how can he be so confident unless he knows that what he's saying will never come to light i mean they dance around words like you know oh it's not extraterrestrial well nobody's arguing that anymore i think we've the people who know what they're talking about are not arguing extraterrestrial so get that fucking word out of your mouth who cares about that nobody's saying that but what do you know <laughs> and what you know is not nothing you know um so I think if we if we imagine that they're innocent 
and that it's not them, that's actually a little bit more alarming that whatever is uh, calling the shots around here, whatever is flying around, I mean, it isn't making an en masse statement yet. So, I mean, it is toying with our airplanes and fucking with our missiles and spooking everybody to shit all the time, taking people and showing up and disappearing and, and just being totally ambiguous and weird. I mean, I don't even know what, I don't even know what would be, uh, what would be satisfying, you know, what, what would be a satisfying answer for anybody at this point? Yeah, that's yeah. the thing, isn't it? Well, and what what would happen? What if we what if we did have this kind of earth shattering moment, where every you know the majority of people, certainly those that were able to pay attention with more than a sort of a five second attention span, kind of saw something that was just indisputable. Okay, we're not alone. There, there is something else. I didn't think of this spiritual side of it or this you know interdimensional whatever it is. I didn't think of that because I was busy in my life, and now this. This is going to make some kind of dramatic impact to my life. It's kind of what, you know, I, I, it, that's, that's what really fascinates me. Like what comes next, you know, what's the, what's the day after, you know? Um, and I don't know. I, I mean, mean, wouldn't it make people kind of insane? Some of, I mean, I'm kind of insane now just, just because I'm out of sorts with uh, the populace, you know, there's a gap now and uh, that's, that's kind of uh, alienating in a way. So, I mean, I do think it would be ontological shock. I think people who are, I, I think people who are pro are justified, but I also think people who are con are justified because both of these probabilities are equally valid. I see people losing their minds. I see people losing their fucking minds and not really knowing, um, what to do next for me and this is just me uh, but i imagine it would be a lot of other people if something uh was obvious like that you asked the real question um well first of all nobody in congress is saying the obvious which the pentagon is nonchalant about this superior force in the airspace you know i think you've got like hundreds of Congress people and senators and stuff. And really, we've only got maybe five, six, seven who are really kind of championing this kind of awareness and 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 disclosure of some description and um transparency. And you think that that's really like although they're vocal, there's some real kind of vocal kind of cheerleaders for for the subject. That's such a small number considering the in you know the entirety of Congress and and, and the Senate. And it just yeah, I, I guess it just makes you think, like they're you know they're how how successful are they going to be, and what kind of impact will it make? I don't know. I mean, it's I mean because I'm in the UK and we've got a very different different political system, and there's just nobody nobody talking about it over here at all. Just no one. I mean, you know, Francisco, um, the MEP that uh, is kind of trying to push this stuff in the European. Um, European Parliament and you know doing some really great work yeah really great work and you know he's, he's kind of pushing things along and you know he's he's really probably the only person really politician wise in the EU that's that's kind of pushing for this but it's kind of like sometimes you really feel like for me I really feel like we're getting somewhere you know we're we're going to reach a kind of critical point where things are going to dramatically change and we're going to learn things and we're going to kind of come together potentially and then it, this almost this backwards and forwards game where the next day it's like, oh, the arrow reports out or this person or this other subject, all those Congress people are now talking about this other subject and that's on hold. Well, hang on, I thought we were going to get to this critical, you know, it, it's just uh, pulls on your heartstrings a little bit. I just wonder uh, if it is maybe premature, if it's, um, if these people who are fighting I mean, the opposition is so strong and yes, you could, you could say that it's control, but like, what if it is a benevolent gesture, like a caring, uh, compassionate gesture? Um, because I mean, the world is pretty chaotic right now. People are as 
unhealthy as ever, and more unhealthy than ever, and uh, mentally, spiritually. Um, these people who are fighting for to let people know. I mean, it seems like it's a human right to know. I I believe that, but um, I can't discount how dangerous the information is. I mean, what if Pandora's box opens tomorrow? Then you do you do end up with ontological shock, you know. And and some people just aren't being honest about that. Some people are being they're just dismissing that a bunch of bad stuff will happen. And um, you know you you know like I like I was trying to say, you know when when Uncle Sam can't provide the protections, then you ask why am I paying taxes to you? Who are you? What are you doing with my money? What are you doing with our money? How long have you been doing this with our money? Did you kill the president with our money? You know, like what else have you done in secret? And why do people keep secrets? Because whatever it is would just rattle you. And um, at this point, you know, they can't um, they can't answer for all the things that they've done. And I think it's it's compounded too by the fact that everybody's out seeking blood. I mean, there's so much, so many red hands, you know, there's so much dirt, there's so much scandal. Um, I think that too would be shocking. You know, the aliens can be over here and in, 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 the, in the baseball field, like, you know, I, no, that's, that's irrelevant, you know, and you're, you can't trust this paramount thing to your reality, your nation, you know, I mean, it's not just our nation, you know, America, America's. You know, let's just say everybody in the world pays attention for one second and realizes that every horrible thing that has been speculated about is true. And all uh, the cat's out of the bag. You did it. You uh, you did it, uh, Matt Gates. You did it, Tim Burchett. You, hooray, you did it. Now what? I think everybody's going to spend the day crying. I mean, that's that's what I've heard. I mean, I've 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 I sent you that report. I, f I forget all the names in it, but it was basically when people had face it and saw it you know they, they encountered these 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 people from not here and they were just completely distraught they were torn to pieces their reality had come to a screeching halt that certainly has happened to me and i haven't physically met them yet that i that i know of you know i don't remember meeting them and um just just the the fractional instance that i have had floored me I mean, I hit spiritual rock bottom in a way. I mean, it was clear as day. I was not under the influence of anything. I was in good spirits. Everything it was real. I don't nobody can take that from me. You know, and um my mother had an encounter and it was real to her. And um, you know, her being the religious person that she is, to tell like to say the word saucer or disc when she was describing what it was that she saw. I mean, that was hard for her to say. Nobody knows what to make of it. And she still goes to church and she still, but she saw that. And I'm glad it's like a mercy that she doesn't know what to make of it. It's a mercy that she doesn't see it as anything more than some sort of craft that potentially, maybe it's the military's. Hopefully that's what she thinks. And and I think that she's just and, and look at how she my mother is now, uh, I think in her 50s. I don't know. But I mean, she's just kind of buried that idea. She goes to church and she's she prays to God and stuff. And that's it. That other part, put that in the vault, you know, <laughs> but she's locked it away all these years. It's not something that's not part of her reality. I mean, another possibility is that people just do a whole lot of that. You know, it kind of seems like whatever it is, is doing two things, staying hidden and showing itself to us. Mm. Yeah. Why? I mean, is, is it just going to get worse? <laughs> <laughs> you you make a really good point. I, I, I often overlook this kind of the negative side of it because I, I speak to a lot of people about the positive side, but there are this, there is a, there is a negative element to this and and it's no different from human nature, isn't it? And if you kind of look at it as it, as we do humans, you know, the majority of people, I think, deep down are good. You know, if you were in need, if you were lying on the floor in need of some kind of help, somebody would do something, you know, within their kind of tool belt of options to 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 help you. But there'll be 
a really small fraction of people that actually are really quite bad. And I think mm -hmm. if you know, it's an easy way to comprehend it looking at humans because we kind of generally understand humans, but there are bad, but the majority are quite good. And, you know, there's that possibility that that could be the phenomenon as well. And there could be multiple things all at once. And, you know, an element of that could be some kind of a negative, um, a negative element. And, and I guess for, for me, it's something like that is what would really scare people really scared people that actually yeah there's this really dangerous thing we can't we can't like you say and you know we can't help you we're your government that's who you pay to protect you and support you and look after you and actually we can't you know we, we've kind of been playing here you know <laughs> we can't protect you from this um uh, you know the, the shock of that yeah I, I often overlook that you know there's so many people that say look i had this experience is really positive i've never spoken to anybody that's had a uh, you know, an experience of abduction, for example, or an experience of some kind of physical harm being caused to them in their experience. And and perhaps, you know, perhaps that's something that I do, I need to kind of dive into and, and talk to some of those people. But yeah, it's interesting. It is, mm -hmm. you know, it, yeah. in all honesty, it has been like an, an overwhelming positive uh, experience from most people that I've kind of spoken to barring a couple, but in terms of on camera, it has been mostly positive. Um, mm. There have been a few, there, you know, there have been a few that have had really negative experiences, but it's difficult to know if that's kind of part of their life. You know, it's such a, humans are so complicated. Um, and, and well, so I, I see a, a striking similarity to the, you know, in, encounters with the phenomenology and um psychedelic experiences you know um it can seem bad like i've i've had um you know exper psychedelic experiences that seemed like demonic possession and were very scary but turned out to be something quite positive and then you do have um encounters that are they seem 100 percent bad but i think um I think it's just a matter of perspective. I mean, for me, like, um, you know, the American alchemy, he used the term forcing function. I mean, it certainly seems to be that. So, I mean, it's been, it's been positive through some seemingly ne negative experiences, you know, I mean, I've had, I've had several of those, um, but I, that's just the word. I mean, it's just an experience really at the end of the day, you know, um, you could call it a bad trip if you feel like it, if it makes you feel better about it, if you want to label it that, I think that's self-defeating. Um, I mean, what's bad to the, what's bad to the sea lion is dinner to the Mako shark, you know, I mean, it's all nature at the end of the day. So, um, I see a, I see a light that is positive. I see you know, the, the good people of the world doing something quite good with whatever this is, you know, I mean, it always seems if it's like the crash retrievals, if it's truly a donation, then that's just, um, that just kind of makes me think that there really is a non-interference policy, you know, that they're, they're doing things that are, um, shaping, nudging as much as they can, but maybe there's a directive that just says, leave the farm alone, see what happens, see what they do. So the positive thing is um, maybe that people are going to have to stand up and do something because there isn't a higher power beyond us that's going to do anything about the situation that we're in. So I think that's kind of what disclosure sort of represents is, is um, the positive, like what, what do these opposing forces want from it? You know, I mean, everybody I really enjoy listening to, like uh, Gary Nolan, they're like, um, I think that they've got their eyes set on a type of utopia where we figure out medicine, we master medicine, we master energy. You know, I want my children to inherit a world with desalinated seawater and, you know, may maybe we get our... Yeah, CO2 emissions under control and such. I mean, I see a very, I, I am 
feeling and and encountering on a daily basis a positive, hopeful energy. And um, and so, I mean, within all these things that may be bad, there's polarity, you know, where there's um, disinformation, there's truth. And honestly, you can't have one without the other. So it's a really cool thing that people like Sean Kirkpatrick just look like impotent toads to everybody right now because, you know, I don't really have enough money to butt heads with them, but some people do and they're around, they're doing the work. I mean, we can all kind of be a little starry eyed about that because that's a, that's a very positive future that I see. So it's, uh, it, like I said earlier, it's us becoming type one. It's tense, you know, soon uh, maybe God will appear to us, you know, <laughs> and we'll all just have to come to terms with it and grow up real quick. Just rip the bandaid off and be like, okay, this is it now. I mean, honestly, I, I had no choice but to get over it. I mean, it, it really was that dramatic. So um, if I can do it and I'm, I'm just as much a fan of my creature comforts as anybody, but if I can do it, you can do it. You know, it, it changed me. I was a skeptic. I didn't, I would hear a physicist talk about, you know, light years and travel and all this. And you hear really like, a, you know, stubborn people like Richard Dawkins. And now he seems ridiculous to me that he says that there's no consciousness in the atom. Now I'm now everything's up in the air. Physics is up in the air. Mathematics is up in the air. History is up in the air. It's kind of an exciting time to be alive. It's very positive. Yeah. yeah. I feel the same way. Yeah, man. Brother, it's been an absolute pleasure. I really, really appreciate your time, man. It's um Yeah, man. It's been a long time coming. I really enjoyed it. Thank for you. Sure. For... Let's do it again. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Let's 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 plan for another one, man. And um let's keep in touch. And I know we will anyway, but let's, you know, let's do this again. Yeah, man. And I'll be your eyes and ears at uh, contact in the desert too. Yeah, please do. That'd be amazing. Cool, man. Literally. All right, brother. A strap like a GoPro. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I actually might do that. Yeah. All right, All right buddy. Take care of yourself, Have man. Have a good day. You too, man.